Thank you. 
Class of 1998, please rise. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the faculty of the United States Naval Academy. Leading the academic procession is Grand Marshal A. Mazen Alwen. Professor Alwen is carrying the Naval Academy's mace, symbol of academic authority. The Naval Academy's civilian faculty appear at today's commissioning exercises in the traditional academic regalia to which they are entitled by virtue of their, the degrees they hold. Originally, academic costumes were simply the black clerical robe and hood worn by members of the religious orders that established the first European universities. As many universities became secular centers of intellectual inquiry, the design and symbolism of the regalia changed. Today, the cap and gown are trimmed to identify the wearer's academic degree. The color on the edging of the hood indicates the field of study and the colors of the university from which the degree was granted. They are displayed in the hood's center. Examples of the standard color code represented among the Naval Academy faculty are economics, copper, education, light blue, engineering, orange, philosophy, dark blue, physical education, sage green, science, golden yellow,
Next in the procession are the 36 brigade officers and 33 senior enlisted personnel who have been the professional mentors to the six battalions and 30 companies of the brigade and have overseen the development of the graduating class into naval officers. We are proud of our outstanding faculty, brigade officers, and enlisted personnel, and I invite you to join me in recognizing them. <laughs> Class of 1998, seats.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Bugler, sound attention. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral J.L. Johnson, and the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Charles C. Krulak. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by the Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable John H. Dalton, and Admiral Charles R. Larson, Superintendent, U.S. Naval Academy.
Ladies and gentlemen, the singing of our national anthem will be led by Midshipman First Class Angela M. Cruz and Midshipman First Class Eddie F. Whitley, Jr. Please remain standing for the invocation by Captain C. Richard Duncan, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Let us pray. Eternal God of life and truth, at this graduation and commissioning ceremony we commit to you the most precious treasure of our home and nation. These young men and women of the United States Naval Academy Class of 1998. We give thanks for the pride they have garnered for themselves, their families, their shipmates, the Naval Service, and their country. We pray on this important day in their lives that you would help them also realize that pride, ability, and team spirit are only a part of their experience, that deep within the soul of each Naval Academy graduate is an uncompromising sense of honor and rightness. Make this so indelible in them that all their thoughts, words, and actions will continue to reflect honor upon them, the Navy and Marine Corps, their country, and most of all, upon you, their God. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Superintendent of the United States Naval Academy, Admiral, Char Admiral Charles R. Larson, United States Navy. President Clinton, Secretary Dalton, Admiral Johnson, General Krulak, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most especially the members of the class of 1998 and your friends and families. Mr. President, let me say it's an honor to have our Commander-in-Chief here today on this very special occasion. Thank you for coming. I also, uh, I also would like to recognize you know, this has been a wonderful week, and everything has gone flawlessly and smoothly. And I'd like to recognize our public works personnel and all those behind-the-scenes people that worked so hard, out of sight, to make all of this look effortless and easy. I think they deserve a tremendous round of applause. To the graduates, I had the opportunity to say farewell and share some personal thoughts with you yesterday at Alumni Hall, and also, of course, to give you a little personal advice, final advice. But I told you how proud I am of your strong leadership, the way that you took charge and led us to extraordinary levels of accomplishment this year in professional performance, academics, athletics, and community service. You can go to the fleet proud of who you are, and proud of where you came from. 
You are truly a great group, and I will remember our four years together by the bay. And to the parents, I want you to know that your sons and daughters are joining the best Navy and Marine Corps our country and the world has ever known. We have the best people, modern technology, great systems, the best the world has to offer, and we have a long string of operational successes that have made a major contribution to global stability. The opportunities of this class are unlimited, and I am very happy for them. Yes, the class of 1998 has a great future with many opportunities, and they are ready. I will be watching your contributions and your accomplishments with great pride. The only difference is, this time I'll be watching from the sidelines rather than from the playing field, but I'll be watching. Good luck. It's been a pleasure getting to know you both individually and collectively over the last four years. We've been through it all together, and it's been a great trip. And now I take pleasure in introducing a very special guest to today's ceremony. He knows just how important this day is to all of you because 34 years ago, he was in the same point in his career that you are today, just about ready to graduate from the Naval Academy as a commissioned officer. And for the past five years, he has led our Navy through some challenging times. And through those years, he has worked tirelessly to reaffirm the core values that we all stand for, honor, courage, and commitment. This Louisiana native graduated with distinction from the Naval Academy in the class of 1964. And he later had a, was awarded a master's degree in business administration from the Wharton School of Finance and Commerce at the University of Pennsylvania. He served in the Navy from 1964 to 1969 as a lieutenant and was later promoted to lieutenant commander in the Naval Reserve. He has distinguished himself in both the private and the public sectors. He became the 70th Secretary of the Navy on July 22, 1993, in ceremonies right here at the Naval Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased to introduce our Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable John Dalton. Thank you, Admiral Larson. Chuck, at this year final graduation as superintendent, I want to pass on my deep appreciation for your leadership. As one of this institution's most distinguished graduates, the Naval Academy, the Naval Service, and the nation have benefited from your service for nearly 40 years. Seven of those years has been as superintendent where your vision has truly paid off. Chuck, you've done a great job. You have revitalized the character development program, and you have reaffirmed to the American people the absolute necessity of our service academies. We are all most grateful to you. Let's give Chuck Larson another round of applause. President Clinton, Admiral Johnson, General Krulak, distinguished guests, parents and friends of the brigade, and most especially today's real superstars, the graduating midshipmen of the great class of 1998. I am honored once again to stand before you as a graduate, a former naval officer, and now as your secretary. 
Your enthusiasm and your impressive level of achievement are a great source of pride and hope as I look to the exciting and challenging future that awaits you in the Naval Service. Rest assured, the greatest arm of our foreign security policy is and will continue to be the United States Navy and the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Be very proud of your place. You have earned it. But most of all, I urge you to work hard, know your stuff, be a person of integrity, and take care of your people. One of America's best young naval officers worked hard, and he became one of our greatest presidents. President John F. Kennedy had the power to touch people's lives and to energize them to serve their country. He touched my life. When he spoke here at graduation in 1961, I was a plebe. And also, the plebe year, I had the opportunity to march in his inaugural parade. Sadly, less than three years later, I was given the privilege to lead a specially chosen honor company in President Kennedy's funeral procession. John Kennedy touched many other people. One was a young man from Arkansas who had come to Washington in the summer of 1963 as a part of Boys Nation to learn more about his government. When President Kennedy spoke to this young man, and shook his hand. It inspired a conviction within his heart that someday he could give to his country the same level of service that President Kennedy did. That man was, of course, William Jefferson Clinton. There was something in that handshake, I dare say, that helped to bring forth the potential leadership in the young, Bill Clinton and set him on the path of public service that has distinguished his life. President Kennedy was the first former naval officer to become president. Starting with him, each of the last eight presidents has some unique relationship with the Navy. Six served on active duty in the Navy. President Reagan, although he served in the Army, also portrayed a naval officer in a movie. <laughs> but there's something you probably don't know about President Clinton. As president, he has been aboard more of our Navy ships than any other president since Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership and your continuing interest in our sailors and Marines. As our 42nd President, Bill Clinton has worked tirelessly to lead America to the full promise of its ideals. He has fought for and achieved legislation that has made our nation more respected, more productive, more competitive, and more concerned about our people. As a world leader, his efforts have been instrumental in furthering peace in the Balkans, the Middle East, the Arabian Gulf, Ireland, and many other areas of regional strife. He has taken the lead in forging a global consensus of responsive 21st century threats that threaten all mankind. 
his tough stance on nuclear testing in India is just the latest example. As our commander in chief, he has consistently supported a high quality, highly capable military. And he has been the architect of the proven national security strategy of engagement and enlargement. It is a strategy that is responsible for America's economic revitalization, the accelerating rise of democracy around the world, and the peace we enjoy. The strategy of worldwide engagement and enlargement is not easy. It is comprehensive and complex. It takes a forward deployed, dedicated force of professional sailors and Marines. It takes relentless and often courageous attempts to open new lines of dialogue, trade, and political and military coalition building. But most of all, the strategy of engagement and enlargement takes hands-on leadership and vision at the very top. America is fortunate that President Bill Clinton has been our leader with the right vision to forge this successful strategy. He has led our determined foreign and national security policy without apology to those in the world who would question or threaten America's conviction to do what is right. That will be clearly evident again today, as you will see. To the brigade of midshipmen, I assure you that your commander-in-chief is grateful to have the promise today of your leadership and your honor, courage, and commitment as he leads our military in peace and in conflict at this crucial time in our history. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my high honor and great privilege to introduce the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Secretary Dalton, thank you for your generous introduction and your dedicated service. Admiral Larson, thank you. Admiral Johnson, General Krulak, Admiral Ryan. Board of Visitors, Chair Byron, to the faculty and staff of the Academy, distinguished guests, to proud parents and family members, and especially to the Brigade of Midshipmen, I am honored to be here today. And pursuant to longstanding tradition, I bring with me a small gift. I hereby free all midshipmen who are on restriction for minor conduct offenses. There was so much enthusiasm, I wonder if you heard the word minor offensive. <clears throat> you know, the President has the signal honor of addressing all of our service academies serially, one after the other in appropriate order. This is the second time I have had the great honor of being here at the Naval Academy. But I began to worry about my sense of timing. I mean, what can you say to graduating midshipmen in a year when the most famous ship on Earth is again the Titanic? <laughs> but then I learned this is a totally, almost blindly confident bunch. After all, over in King Hall, you eat cannonballs. 
Now, for those of you who don't know what they are, they're not the ones Francis Scott Key saw flying over Fort McHenry. They're just huge apple dumplings. Nonetheless, they require a lot of confidence. <laughs> I will try to be relatively brief today. I was given only one instruction. I should not take as long as your class took to scale Herndon Monument. Now, at four hours and five minutes, the slowest time in recorded history, I have a lot of leeway. But you have more than made up for it. You have done great things, succeeding in a rigorous academic environment trained to be superb officers. You have done extraordinary volunteer work for which I am personally very grateful. In basketball, you made it to the NCAA for the second time in a row. You defeated Army in football last year. In fact, you were 26 and 6 against teams from Army this year. And while I must remain neutral in these things, <laughs> I salute your accomplishments. <laughs> Let me also join the remarks that Secretary Dalton made in congratulating your superintendent. Admiral Larson has performed remarkable service as an aviator, submarine commander, commander in chief in the Pacific twice at the helm of the academy. I got to know him well when he was our commander-in-chief in the Pacific. I came to appreciate more than I otherwise ever could have his unique blend of intelligence and insight and character and passionate devotion to duty. In view of the incidents on the Indian subcontinent in the last few days, I think it's important for the historical record to note that the first senior official of the United States who told me that there was a serious potential problem there and we had better get ready for it was Admiral Chuck Larson several years ago. I, when I asked him to return to the academy, I thought it was almost too much and then I realized it might have been too little, for he loves this academy so much, this is hardly tough duty. He met all its challenges. He taught you midshipmen to strive for excellence without arrogance, to maintain the highest ethical standards. Admiral, on behalf of the American people, I thank you for your service here, your 40 years in the Navy, your devotion to the United States. We are all very grateful to you. I also have every confidence that Admiral Ryan is a worthy successor, and I wish him well. As I speak to you and other graduates this spring, I want to ask you to think about the challenges we face as a nation in the century that is just upon us, and how our mission must be to adapt to the changes of changing times while holding fast to our enduring ideals. In the coming weeks, I will talk about how the information revolution can widen the circle of opportunity or deepen inequalities, about how immigration and our nation's growing diversity can strengthen and unite America or weaken and divide it. But nothing I will have the chance to talk about this spring is more important than the mission I charge you with today, the timeless mission of our men and women in uniform, protecting our nation and upholding our values in the face of the changing threats that are as new as the new century. Members of the class of 1998, 
You lead the yard at the dawn of a new millennium in a time of great hope. Around the world, people are embracing peace, freedom, free markets. More and more nations are committed to educating all their children and stopping the destruction of our environment. The information revolution is sparking economic growth and spreading the ideas of freedom around the world. Technology is moving so fast today that the top-of-the-line high-speed computers you received as plebes today are virtually museum pieces. <laughs> In this world, our country is blessed with peace, prosperity, declining social ills. But today's possibilities are not tomorrow's guarantees. Just last week, India conducted a series of nuclear explosive tests, reminding us that technology is not always a force for good. India's action threatens the stability of Asia and challenges the firm international consensus to stop all nuclear testing. So again, I ask India to halt its nuclear weapons program and join the 149 other nations that have already signed the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. And I ask Pakistan to exercise restraint to avoid a perilous nuclear arms race. This specter of a dangerous rivalry in South Asia is but one of the many signs that we must remain strong and vigilant against the kinds of threats we have seen already throughout the 20th century. Regional aggression and competition, bloody civil wars, efforts to overthrow democracies. But also, our security is challenged increasingly by non-traditional threats from adversaries both old and new, not only hostile regimes, but also terrorists and international criminals who cannot defeat us in traditional theaters of battle, but search instead for new ways to attack by exploiting new technologies and the world's increasing openness. As we approach the 21st century, our foes have extended the fields of battle from physical space to cyberspace, from the world's vast bodies of water to the complex workings of our own human bodies. Rather than invading our beaches or launching bombers, these adversaries may attempt cyber attacks against our critical military systems and our economic base. Or they may deploy compact and relatively cheap weapons of mass destruction, not just nuclear, but also chemical or biological, to use disease as a weapon of war. Sometimes the terrorists and criminals act alone, but increasingly they are interconnected and sometimes supported by hostile countries. If our children are to grow up safe and free, we must approach these new 21st century threats with the same rigor and determination we applied to the toughest security challenges of this century. We are taking strong steps against these threats today. We have improved anti-terrorism cooperation with other countries, tightened security for our troops, our diplomats, our air travelers, strengthened sanctions on nations that support terrorists, given our law enforcement agencies new tools. We broke up terrorist rings before they could attack New York's Holland Tunnel, the United Nations, and our airlines. We have captured and brought to justice many of the offenders. But we must do more. Last week, I announced America's first comprehensive strategy to control international crime and bring criminals, terrorists, and money launderers to justice. Today, I come before you to announce three new initiatives. The first, broadly directed at combating terrorism. The other two, addressing two potential threats from terrorists and hostile nations. Attacks on our computer networks and other critical systems upon which our society depends, and attacks using biological weapons. On all of these efforts, we will need the help of the Navy and the Marines. Your service will be critical in combating these new challenges. To make these three initiatives work, we must have the concerted efforts of a whole range of federal agencies, from the armed forces to law enforcement to intelligence to public health. I am appointing a national coordinator for security, infrastructure protection, and counterterrorism to bring the full force of all our resources 
to bear swiftly and effectively. First, we will use our new integrated approach to intensify the fight against all forms of terrorism, to capture terrorists no matter where they hide, to work with other nations to eliminate terrorist sanctuaries overseas, to respond rapidly and effectively to protect Americans from terrorism at home and abroad. Second, we will launch a comprehensive plan to detect, deter, and defend against attacks on our critical infrastructures, our power systems, water supplies, police, fire and medical services, air traffic control, financial services, telephone systems, and computer networks. Just 15 years ago, these infrastructures, some within government, some in the private sector, were separate and distinct. Now they are linked together over vast computer and electronic networks, greatly increasing our productivity, but also making us much more vulnerable to disruption. Three days ago, we saw the enormous impact of a single failed electronic link when a satellite mal malfunction disabled pagers, ATMs, credit card systems, and TV and radio networks all around the world. Beyond such accidents, intentional attacks against our critical systems already are underway. Hackers break into government and business computers. They can raid banks, run up credit card charges, extort money by threats to unleash computer viruses. If we fail to take strong action, then terrorists, criminals, and hostile regimes could invade and paralyze these vital systems, disrupting commerce, threatening health, weakening our capacity to function in a crisis. In response to these concerns, I established a commission chaired by retired General Tom Marsh to assess the vulnerability of our critical infrastructures. They returned with a pointed conclusion. Our vulnerability, particularly to cyber attacks, is real and growing. And they made important recommendations that we will now implement to put us ahead of the danger curve. We have the best trained, best equipped, best prepared armed forces in history. But as ever, we must be ready to fight the next war, not the last one. And our military, as strong as it is, cannot meet these challenges alone. Because so many key components of our society are operated with the private sector, we must create a genuine public-private partnership to protect America in the 21st century. Together, we can find and reduce the vulnerabilities to attack in all critical sectors, develop warning systems, including a national center, to alert us to attacks, increase our cooperation with friendly nations, and create the means to minimize damage and rapidly recover in the event attacks occur. We can and we must make these critical systems more secure so that we can be more secure. Third, we will undertake a concerted effort to prevent the spread and use of biological weapons and to protect our people in the event these terrible weapons are ever unleashed by a rogue state, a terrorist group, or an international criminal organization. Conventional military force will continue to be crucial to curbing weapons of mass destruction. In the confrontation against Iraq, deployment of our Navy and Marine forces has played a key role in helping to convince Saddam Hussein to accept United Nations inspections of his weapons facilities. But we must pursue the fight against biological weapons on many fronts. We must strengthen the International Biological Weapons Convention with a strong system of inspections to detect and prevent cheating. This is a major priority. It was part of my State of the Union address earlier this year, and we are working with other nations and our industries to make it happen. Because our troops serve on the front line of freedom, we must take special care to protect them. So we have been working on vaccinating them against biological threats, and now we will inoculate all our armed forces, active duty and reserves, against deadly anthrax bacteria. Finally, we must do more to protect our civilian population from biological weapons. The Defense Department has been teaching state and local officials 
to respond if the weapons are brandished or used. Today it is announcing plans to train National Guard and Reserve elements in every region to address this challenge. But again, we must do more to protect our people. We must be able to recognize a biological attack quickly in order to stop its spread. We will work to upgrade our public health systems for detection and warning, to aid our preparedness against terrorism, and to help us cope with infectious diseases that arise in nature. We will train and equip local authorities throughout the nation to deal with an emergency involving weapons of mass destruction, creating stockpiles of medicines and vaccines to protect our civilian population against the kind of biological agents our adversaries are most likely to obtain or develop. And we will pursue research and development to create the next generation of vaccines, medicines, and diagnostic tools. The Human Genome Project will be very, very important in this regard. And again, it will aid us also in fighting infectious diseases. We must not cede the cutting edge of biotechnology to those who would do us harm. Working with the Congress, America must maintain its leadership in research and development. It is critical to our national security. In our efforts to battle terrorism and cyber attacks and biological weapons, all of us must be extremely aggressive. But we must also be careful to uphold privacy rights and other constitutional protections. We do not ever undermine freedom in the name of freedom. To the men and women of this class of 1998, over four years, you have become part of an institution, the Navy, that has repeatedly risen to the challenges of battle and of changing technology. In the Spanish-American War 100 years ago, our Navy won the key confrontations at Manila Bay and off Cuba. In the years between the World Wars, the Navy made tremendous innovations with respect to aircraft carrier and amphibious operations. In the decisive battle in the Pacific in World War II at Midway, our communications experts and code breakers obtained and Admiral Nimitz seized on crucial information about the enemy fleet that secured victory against overwhelming odds. In the Cold War, nuclear propulsion revolutionized our carrier and submarine operations. And today, our Navy and Marine Corps are fundamental to our strategy of global engagement aiding our friends and warning foes that they cannot undermine our efforts to build a just, peaceful, free future. President Theodore Roosevelt put it succinctly a long time ago. A good Navy, he said, is the surest guarantee of peace. We will have that good Navy because of you. Your readiness, strength, your knowledge of science and technology, your ability to promptly find and use essential information, and above all, your strength of spirit and your core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I ask you to remember, though, that with these new challenges especially, we must all, as Americans, be united in purpose and spirit. Our defense has always drawn on the best of our entire nation. The armed forces have defended our freedom, and in turn, freedom has allowed our people to thrive. Our security innovations have often been sparked and supported over and over by the brilliance and drive of people in non-military sectors, our businesses and universities, our scientists and technologists. Now more than ever, we need the broad support and participation of our citizens as your partners in meeting the security challenges of the 21st century. Members of the class of 1998, you are just moments away from becoming ensigns and second lieutenants. And I have not taken as much time as you did to climb the monument. <laughs> I thank you for giving me a few moments of your attention to talk to you and our nation about the work you will be doing for them for the rest of your careers. You will be our guardians and champions of freedom. Let me say just one thing in closing on a more personal note. We must protect our people from danger and keep America safe and free. But I hope you will never lose sight 
of why we are doing it. We are doing it so that all of your countrymen and women can live meaningful lives according to their own lights. So work hard, but don't forget to pursue also what fulfills you as people. The beauty of the natural world, literature, the arts, sports, volunteer service. Most of all, don't forget to take time for your personal lives, to show your love to your friends and most of all to your families, the parents and grandparents who made the sacrifices to get you here, in the future, your wives, your husbands, your children. In a free society, the purpose of public service, in or out of uniform, is to provide all citizens with the freedom and opportunity to live their own dreams. So when you return from an exhausting deployment or just a terrible day, never forget to cherish your loved ones and always be grateful that you have been given the opportunity to serve, to protect for yourselves and for your loved ones and for your fellow Americans the precious things that make life worth living and freedom worth defending. I know your families are very proud of you today. Now, go and make America proud. Good luck and God bless you. The Academic Dean and Provost of the United States Naval Academy, Dr. William C. Miller. Candidates, please rise. Admiral Larson, on behalf of the faculty of the United States Naval Academy, I present these candidates for the baccalaureate degree and recommend that this degree be conferred upon them. As you have successfully completed your course of study at the United States Naval Academy and have been recommended by the academic board, I, the superintendent, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States, do hereby defer upon each of you the baccalaureate degree designated on your diploma with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. Congratulations, <coughs> graduates. Please be seated. Outstanding achievement within the Brigade of Midshipmen has been recognized by the award of scholarships for postgraduate education at universities abroad. Midshipman Andrew A. Castiglione has been selected as a Rhodes Scholar and will attend Oxford University this fall. Midshipman Castiglione, would you please rise? Midshipman Jason T. Berg and Midshipman Romy V. Christensen have been selected as Marshall Scholarship winners. Midshipman Berg and Christensen will attend the University of London. Midshipman Berg and Midshipman Christensen, would you please rise? This is the second year that two students have been selected to receive the W.H.G. Fitzgerald Scholarship. Midshipman Peter Franklin Halverson and Simon Andrew Latkovich are winners of the 11th Annual Fitzgerald Scholarship. Midshipman Halverson will attend Christchurch at Oxford University. 
Midshipman Latkovich will attend Balliol College at Oxford University. Would Midshipman Halverson and Midshipman Latkovich please rise. <laughs> Midshipman Nicholas Ashley Pinson is the winner of the 10th Annual Thomas Pownell Scholarship. Midshipman Pinson will attend St. John's College at Cambridge University. Midshipman Pinson, please rise. <laughs> Midshipman Shannon Joe Massey has been selected as the winner of the Otto A. Zipp Scholarship and will attend the Uni University of Heidelberg this fall. Midshipman Massey, please rise. Graduates, congratulations on your exceptional academic achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, today we will graduate 908 men and women who have met the many challenges of four years at the Naval Academy. 738 will receive commissions as ensigns in the United States Naval Reserve, 153 as second lieutenants in the United States Marine Corps Reserve. two as second lieutenants in the United States Air Force Reserve and two as second lieutenants in the United States Army Reserve. And we will be proud of their service. The, the class of 1998 also includes graduates from Turkey, Peru, Malaysia, Lebanon, Jordan, Ecuador, Trinidad, Tobago, Estonia, Singapore, Poland, and Thailand. These 11 graduates will return to their countries to receive commissions in their own armed forces or enter other government service. Today's graduates join the nearly 65,000 men and women who have graduated from the Naval Academy since its founding in 1845. Before beginning the introductions, I should remind you of an important Naval Academy tradition. The parents and friends of each graduate are invited to stand when that graduate's name is called. In that way, we can recognize your contribution to the achievement of these fine young men and women. I would like to draw your attention to your graduation program. On pages 13 through 15 of the program are listed the graduate education programs being entered or completed by members of the class of 1998. Those designated for the Navy or Marine Corps Burke Scholarship Program will be considered for graduate school after an initial tour of fleet duty. Midshipmen nominated for the Olmsted Foundation Scholarship will be considered for graduate study at a foreign university after their initial fleet assignments. Students in the Voluntary Graduate Education Program have already begun their graduate study and will complete their master's degrees by December of this year. In the list of graduates in your program, special symbols designate the academic achievements of the class of 1998. Trident scholars have completed independent research projects during their first class year. Many of their papers are publishable contributions to the body of knowledge in their disciplines. Designated faculty candidates have received letters inviting them to return to the Naval Academy as military faculty members after duty tours and completion of graduate study in their fields of endeavor. Members of the graduating class have also completed the stringent requirements of our honors programs in economics, English, history, political science, oceanography, or mathematics. Their diplomas bear the honors designation. Many of these names are also found in your program where midshipmen graduating with distinction are listed according to their order of merit. The president will present diplomas to graduates with distinction. Those midshipmen graduating with distinction, please rise.
Midshipman Peter Noble Lombard II stands first in the class. Jason T. Berg. Peter F. Halverson. Paul C. Schoening. Curtis W. Cronin. Timothy N. Limbert. Nicholas A. Pinson. Daniel R. Mall. Tulio Solano III. Bridget E. Stamp. Britton D. Smith. Simon A. Latkovich. James M. Kohler. Scott B. Grossman. Donald E. Field. Ryan M. Stoddard. Jacob R. Harriman. Micah D. Smith. Sunil R. Ramshamdani. Richard M. Rusnock, Jr. Dewey A. Lopes. Stephen N. McLoon. Christian M. Sewell. John R. Zern. John S. Wiggins. Donald W. Fall II. Romy V. Christensen. William E. Grant. Melissa A. Dunlap. Matthew J. Gilbreth. Andrew M. Toma.
Andrew A. Castiglione. David S. Cox. Henry M. Renke IV. Joseph A. Root. Timothy P. Feist. Matthew J. Ledridge. Jeffrey J. Immel. Ryan G. Sorose. John A. Hodgson. Kang Hien Po. Ian J. Schellinger. Christopher G. Hill. Jonathan B. F. Snavely. Brian M. Vogel. Christopher R. Watkins. Dustin J. Byram. Robert C. Carnell. Richard J. Allman. Joshua R. Pataco. Timothy C. Beam. Michael D. Eason. Timothy J. Allen. Jason C. Paulson. Rafe K. Wysham. Stephen J. Carrier. Scott A. Matson. <laughs> Timothy J. Yannick. Christopher J. Curtis. Darren A. Salapka. Bradley R. Fitzpatrick. Paul J. Detar. Jennifer L. Moreno. Yeah. 
J. A. Young. Chell Kenji Jovig. Matthew E. Chapman. Benjamin M. Lewis. David P. Durkin. Stephen Din Lee. Misty R. Steinberger. Brian P. Taylor. David L. Edgerton. Jason M. Gustin. Ryan E. Shadel. Michael J. Congleton. Coleman V. Ruiz, Jr. Derek G. Salone. Paul E. Roach. Thomas J. Neal, Jr. Michael J. Garcia. Aaron J. Ashenbrenner. Brandon J. Roach. John M. Montgomery. Eric D. Cole. Yo Juan Sinclair on. <laughs> Catherine M. Westover. <laughs> Eric W. Anderson. <laughs> Michael D. Weiskup. Kenneth E. Schwalbe. <laughs> David J. Coe. <laughs> and William A. Taylor. The President, the Superintendent, and the Commandant of Midshipmen will present diplomas to members of the graduating class individually by company. Odd-numbered companies will receive their diplomas from my left and even-numbered companies from my right. From the first company, Jorge C. Castañon. From the second company, Peter J. Andrews. Glenn M. Cesari. Jesse H. Balboa II. Kenneth Y. Chong. Blaine S. Bitterman. Timothy M. Clark. 
Gabrielle A. Bolton. Richard K. Cordell. William J. Burak. Joshua D. Crinklaw. John R. Bush. Jason M. Fesnick. Chong H. Cho. Amy R. Hakola. Robert B. Danberg, Jr. Brendan T. Higgins. Hans A. Fosser. Sumner H. Lee. John T. Fry. Ryan J. Lilly. Mark W. Haney. Ryan D. Lookabill. Marcus A. Kaiser. Gabriel A. Malden. Anthony D. Lacari. Kathleen A. McDermott. Michael S. Yenza. Michael M. Morgan. Michelle A. McKenna. Jason C. Owens. Michael A. McPhail. Layton J. Petrie. William A. Myers, Jr. Alexei Razadin. Lauren S. Reinke. Aaron J. Rigby. Noel Rodriguez. Frank E. Sanchez. John M. Schroeder. Jennifer J. Schulze. Jacob G. Scott. Chad C. Schumacher. Mark B. Stefanik. Karsten E. Spees. Jarrett P. Stricker. Jawan A. Sweat. Beth A. Thomas. From the third company. Brian A. Bender. From the fourth company, Travis W. Cooley. Matthew J. Bonzella. Bethany A. Kraft. Brian A. Bradford. James W. Day. Michael T. Cable. Victor K. Dyson. Kevin M. Coughlin. Lacey F. Edge. Brian K. Cushman. Adam L. Fleming. Timothy P. Davis II. Brian D. Fremming. Thomas E. Elders. Eric M. Griffiths. Michael D. Files. Tori S. Hinkson. Titus L. Fortner. Brad D. Horning. 
Douglas E. Gaynor. Donald A. Hudson. Brian J. Haggerty. Grant M. Koenig. Karina E. Hall. Jessica A. Lockwood. Michael P. Harvey II. George M. Lowe. Michael T. Harry. Mitchell S. McAllister. Jason P. Hurley. Milton V. Mendiera. Charles B. Johnson. Max F. Miller. John K. Lofton IV. Brian J. Pater. Jonathan A. Marvel. Scott A. Pichette. Sandra L. Macbeth. Seth D. Riggins. Terrence S. Neal. John P. Sevilla. Cynthia A. Peace. Matthew J. Stewart. Megan K. Reardon. David N. Viger III. Joel Rodriguez. Christy Annette C. Weimer. Malcolm J. Rumpf. Robert F. Whalen Jr. Christopher E. Smith. Blake D. Wilburn. John P. Thomas. From the Sixth Company, Jeffrey J. Abedini. Ryan B. Warren. Ryan P. Ayler. From the fabulous Five Baby Five Company, George A. Bancroft II. John W. Arbuckle. Daniel W. Bowden. Paul D. Avellino. Heather E. Burwell. John A. Batchmore. Rebecca L. Klein. Laura S. Bass. Elizabeth I. Davis. Warren E. Baugh. James E. Dorf. Gilbert E. Clark, Jr. Pedro H. Espinoza. Jason C. Daly. Christina Esposito. Brendan P. Deanna. Veronica A. Gale. Luis M. Gutierrez. Albert H. Geis, Jr. Jeffrey D. Hughes. Joanne M. Groth. James D. Eisen. Dennis J. Kane. Renee L. Julian, Jr. 
Joshua M. Keeney. Nathan C. Langmack. Brett M. Lavender. Daniel E. Lindblom. Kevin T. Livingston. Brian P. Love. Kathleen F. McMorrow. Christopher C. McCoy. Trevor T. Mead. Noel C. McKnight. Seth R. Michaud. Rachel L. Nagel. Michael P. Murphy. Wendy K. Nowak. Stephen R. Pushkar. Christopher J. Passantrilli. Winston E. Scott II. Christopher J. Person. Jonathan W. Sims. Darren H. Pontel. Matthew A. Sobecki. Luke W. Radlinski. David C. Verona. Corianne P. Rickwald. Raymond M. White. Joshua J. Root. Ty D. Zentner. Misty N. Steele. From the seventh company, Toby B. Barty. From the eighth company, James R. Bailey. Jonathan R. Bear. Paul C. Campbell. Paolo Carcavallo, Jr. Matthew R. Carmona. Christopher H. Delgado. John Chow. Christian F. DeMonsi. Emmett S. Colazzo. Kendra M. Deppi. Ann E. Cossett. Aaron J. Frederick. Brian S. Dijarnay. David F. Harris. Philippe R. DeVega. Heidi D. Haskins. Lydia J. Duffy. David J. Hopkins. Brian A. Eisenhuth. Scott G. Hughes. Catherine E. Evans. Jason R. Hull. Grant W. Flynn. Albert T. Curtin II. Greg T. Gaiman. Joseph M. Levy. Robert M. Geiger. Michael P. Longazel. William T. Harvey. Adel M. Mani. David P. Huron. Matthew J. Maloney. Kermit E. Jones, Jr. Christopher L. Moylan. Daniel C. Kidd. Clayton T. Redinger. Ashley R. McRae. Sarah E. Rawlings. 
Wayne A. Patros. Clayton G. Shane. Fronik Persidski. Miranda L. Sherbs. RVA L. Polk. Peter M. Shoemaker. James A. Potter. Aaron P. Schuler. Carolyn G. Rohde. Matthew C. Sladke. Jennifer L. Sequin. Christopher T. Smith. Alan M. Smith. Rexford C. Trudell. Carrie L. Spanagol. Suzanne Weinrich. Ian D. Stevens. From the Ninth Company, Michael J. Acosta. Christopher W. Stonecker. Olafume K. Adeyami. Gregory J. Suma. R. E. Wade Blizzard. Kevin M. Thomas. Gabriel B. Cavazos. From the 10th Company, Teague L. Collins. Philip A. Duba. Benjamin D. Cohn. Ryan D. Erdman. Philip M. Dana. Megan B. Forehand. Jared D. Donaldson. Tyler D. Francis. Ryan W. Dupnik. Danny J. Garcia. Lynn R. Fodre. Tara S. Golden. Gritska G. Forrest. Anthony R. Graham, Jr. Luke B. Green. James F. Greco. Kevin A. Jacobs. Leon R. Engelwright IV. Peter H. Carvunas. Paul D. Lashmet. Amy A. Kelstrand. Daniel J. Martin. Mary E. Kessler. Aaron M. McGowan. Russell S. LaSink. Jeffrey M. McGrady. David N. Leather. Marcel L. Molette. Brian R. McLoon. Nicole A. Nolette. Thomas S. McGowan. Owen J. Nucci. David B. Noya. John E. Pass. Michael A. Palumbo. Marchin Ratajcik. Thomas A. Pappas. Gary G. Roberts. Gregory M. Paradis. Jonathan Y. Sabado. Robert S. Pudney IV. Terrence M. Shashati. Brendan J. Robinson. Jennifer M. Sheets. J. E. Zimbida. Teague J. Suarez. 
Eric J. Smith. Robert G. Wickman. Griffin K. Stauffer. Julia Y. Younger. Mark A. Sims. From the 11th Company, Joseph P. Abbott, Jr. Elizabeth M. Thorogood. Gilda M. Adesi. Christopher J. Warden. Christopher R. Barnes. Brian M. Weaver. Kevin J. Bauer. Aaron T. Wright. Cinda L. Brown. From the 12th Company, Everett M. Alcorn, Jr. Russell N. Crawford, Jr. Robert J. Allen. Derek A. Dudash. Andrew J. Ballinger. David E. Fulcher. Todd H. Benke. Richard C. Johnston. Andre D. Bonakdar. Scott W. Kinkle. Rocky A. Burns. Mohammed S. Kosabati. Robert L. Burton. Shane T. Marchese. David F. Dawson. Melissa Martin. Horatio G. Delgado. Jason E. Pinko. Brendan R. Egan. Corey M. Shackleton. David S. Foreman. Bradley J. Story. John C. Gee. David B. Townley. Christopher S. Gilmore. Daniel M. Trawick. David L. Hickey. Robert J. Weingart. Christopher I. Hogue. Joel A. White. Emily J. Kachinash. Joel L. Willie. Tanya D. Lehman. Jennifer L. Williams. John J. McGuire IV. Lawrence J. Yatch II. Christina M. Matos. Vincent E. Yieldhall. Stephanie L. Merritt. From the 13th Company, Daniel R. Art. Daniel L. Miller. Stephen R. Bidwell. Matthew P. Palmasano. Michael P. Borelli. Gregory J. Pawson. Andrea J. Craney. Douglas E. Ramsey. David J. Danello. Kevin E. Robb. William G. Delmar. Mandy M. Tyra. Christopher J. Demensic. William J. Tall. Jennifer S. Dowell. Michael T. Valenzuela. John E. Etheridge II. Adam D. Weeder. 
Ruth A. Golden, Ron P. Wisdom, Edward A. Hanley, from the 14th Company, Justin W. Anderson, Terrell M. Hickman, Sean M. Andrews, Carlos A. Jativa, John C. Batchelor, Bradley M. Ledbetter, Luis A. Becerra II, Nathan S. Marvel, Eugene L. Brown, Howard B. Meehan, Justin M. Karsten, Keith M. Roxo, Christina L. Dalmau, Jerry A. Schaefer, Jr., Michael W. Forte, Joseph B. Ship, Anthony E. Giardino, Matthew S. Shubsda, Chad W. Graham, Brian L. Scubin, James C. Grigg, Raphael U. Smalls, Patrick W. Horrigan, Nathaniel B. Stuzzi, Henry H. Kaiser, Jennifer L. Werner, <laughs> Kenneth M. Kerr, from the 15th Company, Chance J. Adam, Colleen M. Kozlowski, Horace R. Ashworth, Michael W. Kostu, Lloyd B. Berman III, Matthew E. Ligon, Eugene N. Bolton, Emilita P. Maiari, Michael R. Breen, Samuel E. McGowan III, Louis W. Calloway, Stephen J. Minahan, Brian M. Campbell, Andrew T. Newsom, Rebecca M. Cheney, Sean M. O'Connor, Adam L. Collier, David L. Sagunski, Matthew E. Collins, Matthew E. Sheeran, David V. DeSantis, Samantha L. Stahl, James S. Dorlone, Russell J. Tate, Paul J. Fennick, James R. Taylor, Daniel H. Halleck, Stephen A. Wagner, Alan A. Kagan, Scott A. Walgren, Paula A. Langeal, from the 16th Company, Dean R. Bolzerak, Shannon J. Massey, Michael P. Bartram, Dale E. Matheny, John R. Becker, James T. Merchant, Stephen A. Beatty, Russ K. Mochizuki, Nathan R. Bitts, Brian E. Nowitzki, Hassan M. Booker, 
Jacob D. Porter. Brandon A. Bosch. Bethany K. Schultz. Jason W. Coffey. Brian D. Summers. Trevor W. Davis. Edward W. Tasker. Matthew W. Dodge. Paul J. Till. Brian M. Drexler. Brenda M. Wahowiak. Shane J. Eisenbraun. From the 17th Company, Jonathan R. Ball. Dahlia D. Farkison. Kevin F. Bravo Ferrer. Stephen C. Fortman. Heather D. Calvert. Kayton P. Gupta. Brian D. Conway. Michael D. Hall. John J. Cremens. Trapper J. Heath. Colin V. Crickard. Jared T. Jacobs. Angela M. Cruz. Benjamin F. Cavanaugh. Michael A. Edwards. Danielle M. Lowe. Michael B. Finn. Eric L. Peterson. Richard W. Haas. Theodore M. Kadem. Aaron R. Hager. Nicole S. Ringwell. Eric J. Jensen. Jeffrey T. Rogish. Raul D. Jimenez. Christopher M. Savage. Quinton D. Jones. Charles P. Smith. Jason T. Kettleson. Kelly C. Smith. Brendan M. Mahan. Kevin J. Sprogue. Jeremy J. Markin. From the 18th Company, Aaron J. Beatty IV. Shannon A. Martin. Brian T. Burke. James R. Neal III. John J. Clendaniel. Michael E. Ogden. James R. Condino. Christopher D. Scheidler. John F. Gibson. Joseph W. Smotherman. Navin Gopal. Corianne Thornton. Vincent M. Guida. Jeremy E. Vallone. Joshua T. Height. Kyle C. Voss. Jamie L. Humphrey. Regina C. Ware. Sherry R. Huron. Eddie F. Whitley, Jr. 
Jeffrey C. Johnson. From the 19th company, Jason M. Bauman. Joshua C. Lafferty. Lisa M. Berberich. Michael C. Lawler. Jason Chung. Kevin R. Lewis. Adon J. Covarubius. Chad J. Livingston. Brian J. Degnan. Jeffrey McQuillan. Daniel P. Duin. Ronnie D. Merrill. Trevor D. Ellis. Adam C. Nazaro. Jason P. Foster. Stephen M. Peace. Jerome A. Gusso. Pamela J. Phillips. Heidi M. Henning. Joseph A. Ruff. Christopher B. Holland. Eric M. Sager. Carrie M. Howe. Greg S. Sanders. Daniel J. Keeler. William A. Savage. Michael J. Kinsella. Stephen P. Schredhelm. Jason Thomas P. Laverius. Joseph B. Sims, Jr. George S. Major. Jason L. Ward. John R. Menser. Mark F. Williams. Jeffrey W. Messer. Jody K. Young. Sarah E. Naval. From the 20th Company, Nathaniel A. Bailey. Judah S. Knighton. Matthew H. Bazarian. Dan E. Pryor. Douglas J. Burfield. Robert F. Reynolds. Sam A. Clark. Samuel P. Russell. Charles E. Fisher. Anthony J. Schwarz. Todd C. Fowler. Gene G. Sievertson II. Jeanette A. Godry. Christopher G. Williams. Tyler L. Goad. Brandon J. Willis. Peter L. Hansen. From the 21st Company, Brett A. Allison. Christopher N. Hyder. Jared T. Asman. Peter D. Heffern. D David W. Boss. Edward A. Hurdy IV. Mark J. Brophy. Holly A. Hoxie. Coleman J. Bryan Jr. Michael D. Campy. 
Jennifer M. Childs. Barry F. Leiden. Patrick T. Fay. Scott A. McBride. Dominique I. Francis. Patrick J. McGrew. John W. Gilmore, Jr. Susan M. Olivier. Robert B. Green. Jacob R. Parsons. Edmund B. Hip. John B. Phillips III. Christopher T. Kovac. Alexander L. Pigay. David B. Mickelvey. Kevin M. Pop. Douglas K. Maher. Michael T. Puffer. William B. Millet III. Brian T. Saul. Robert M. Orr. Matthew S. Schaefer. Sarah K. Penton. David K. Silberman. Rolando Salvatierra, Jr. Darren M. Sweeney. William T. Sawhill. Douglas M. Thumb. Jeanette N. Stewart. Anthony M. Yanoni. James T. Webb. David C. U. Donald J. Williams. From the 22nd Company, Brian L. Babin. Mark B. Williamson. Kathleen M. Baldwin. From the superb 23rd Company, Pablo C. Brewer. Justin J. Bliffin. Roger L. Byron. Jason A. Buckley. Zoe A. Caulfield. Stephen T. Campbell. Eileen Duyall. Amy L. Carson. Randall E. Everly. Rodney L. Clagg. Michael P. Ferns. Thomas J. Cleaver, Jr. Dana S. Fitzpatrick. Michael L. Condrati. Michael R. Gallus. Damien C. Goff. John W. Hale. Brian C. Geis. Edward A. Hope. Keith A. Henderson. Mark A. Johnson. Shanti Holmes McGovern. Andrea P. Kufel. Matthew F. Lopes III. James M. Moberly. Matthew A. Music. Stacy R. Moy. Thomas M. Ogden. Arthur A. Miller III. Robert L. Raddick. Jr. Roger Shaker G. Reddy. Antonio R. Ramos. 
Shiho A. Sefton. Ryan I. Reynolds. Aaron F. Shoemaker. Gregory R. Stepler. Jeffrey R. Soa. Mary Kate E. Sullivan. Charles D. Spensley. Sean M. Triggs. Warren W. Tomlinson. Jonathan L. Wright. Robert L. Underhill, Jr. From Hardcore 24, Stephen W. Aldridge. Morris C. Berbers. Roy L. Barber. Peter A. Weston. Silas L. Boyer II. Matthew J. Williams. Susanna G. Brugler. Michael J. Zako. Derek L. Clark. Jonas S. Zikas. Mark A. Close. From the 25th Company, Shelby Y. Becker. Aaron M. Corcoran. James H. Brady. Sean M. Cowan. Daryl J. Capo. Rebecca M. Dowling. Arif Chertlick. Matthew S. Greenwald. Janie R. Colosso. James C. Haney. Carol B. Davis, Jr. Christopher E. Keith. John Din, Jr. Christopher O. Lake. Eric L. Edwards. Angela K. Maganza. Jason P. Fox. Timothy R. Mayer. Timothy E. French. Jose A. Perez. James T. Fuller. Tyler L. Phipps. Jason P. Grower. Jason E. Reap. Brian P. Hogan. John C. Rosica. Garth A. Johnston. Alan R. Sable. Jeremy T. Kane. Brian J. Sawicki. Elisa N. Lazio. Andrew J. Schulman. John M. Marburger. Andrea L. Slough. Nicole A. Bonder. Brian J. Swanson. Simon C. McKeon. Rick T. Taylor. Cyril T. Millay. Badger Bob Tongchu. Scott D. Mushaw. Laura F. Tuck. David P. Moore. Cheryl J. Wilson. Melissa B. Pleen. From the 26th Company, Scott D. Barczewski. Neil C. Potts. 
Tara A. Berger. Garrett W. Price. Jonathan E. Curtis. Min T. Trin. Blake I. Dorr. Kenneth A. Wallace. Benjamin P. Dooley. Jason E. Weed. Robert E. Flannery II. Sean Z. Wotek. Angelo D. Fontanaza II. Kevin T. Wright. Danita A. Gross. From the 27th Company, Michael J. Burks. Tyler W. Head. Shannon L. Callahan. Michael P. Helton. Kevin S. Canty. Matthew R. Hennessy. Joseph V. Feminia. Stephen C. Hausch the second. Roger S. Jacobs. Brian M. Jones. Cynthia P. Keating. Patrick B. Lassard. Helen E. Claycamp. Ryan J. Lewis. David V. Loya. Catherine M. McCreary. Andrew J. McNiven. David R. McKinney. Sarah C. Minogue. Christina J. Neal. Thomas E. Neal, Jr. Nathan R. Pakovitz. Barton B. O'Brien. Richard R. Reyes. Stephen P. Furman. Rebecca A. Schwambeck. Ryan C. Phillips. Ryan L. Segerty. Herman L. Reed. Edward T. Stickle, Jr. Christopher B. Robinson. Sarah A. Styers. Timothy P. Schubert. From the 28th. A. Bowman. Robert J. Sutton. Jalene M. Bushnell. Todd D. Tavalazzi. Kevin C. Clark. Craig T. Thayer. William A. Davey. Terrence S. Bonasek. Brandon T. Dye. Curtis L. Walker, Jr. Ryan C. Yule. Brandon W. Warren. Vincent D. Evans. William D. Westmoreland. April L. Goldsby. Eric D. Zito. Norman K. Hepler, Jr. From the 29th Company, Stephen T. Blasieski. Brian K. Hogan. Matthew J. Booker. Joshua T. Huggins. Michael J. Cabana. Andrew P. Kellogg. 
Christopher L. Conniff. Jared A. Kesselring. Derek M. Krausor. William C. Kirby. Jeannie K. Daffron. Ken J. Kleinschnicker. Mark E. Davis. David A. Koenig. Sean P. Dinan. Anastasio Scutapetris. Jed R. Esperito. Joseph A. Laba. Joseph A. Goodwin. Jeremy L. Leiby. John H. Hamilton IV. John S. Leisner. Ashley E. Harrison. David L. Manka. James R. Jones. Andrew R. McLean. Sandra L. Kozlowski. Jessica A. Ridgely. Brian E. Lorenz. Nicole M. Stravros. Ryan D. McCrillis. Eric L. Taylor. Jim A. McShay. From Dirty 30, Elizabeth J. Adams. Joshua H. Peterson. Bjorn S. Barha. Ruben C. Powers. Matthew P. Capodano. Kenneth C. Robb. Andrew J. Clarendon. Jason J. Rude Rude. Seraphine P. Codina III. Paul M. Savalevsky. Douglas A. Syke. Daryl A. Dalton. Colby W. Sherwood. William E. Danachek II. Rogelio P. Valencia II. Kenneth S. Douglas. Samit K. Varma. Glenn T. Harris. Kenneth E. Vogel. Joshua W. Hayes. Sean E. Williams. Lee A. Hurley. Jeremy S. Winters. Michael B. Imms. Diana A. Yorty. Stephen P. Kaufman. Paul J. Crumholz. Hillary Lumpkin. Gregory P. Maldorino. Brett M. Miller. Michael G. Newton. Jacob D. Schmitter. Chad W. Segrin. Sean M. Simmons. Jason C. Smith. 
Guy M. Snodgrass. William C. Stout. Faith K. Tabasco. Brian C. Vanyo. Nathan A. Williams. Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Charles C. Krulak, will administer the oath of office. Will administer the oath of office to those being commissioned in the United States Marine Corps. General Krulak, I present 153 midshipmen of the graduating class to be commissioned in the United States Marine Corps. First, let me uh, congratulate the families and the extended families of those of the class of 1998. You have every right to be tremendously proud. Will those members of the class of 1998 who have chosen to lead America's Corps Marines into the 21st century, please stand. <laughs> that is. On 4 June, on 4 June, 1986, former President of the United States of America, Ronald Reagan, made the following statement, and I quote, some people spend an entire lifetime wondering if they made a difference. The Marines don't have that problem. President Reagan was right, and in 30 seconds you will have completed your oath of office, you will be United States Marines, and you will be transformed forever. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Now I ask you to raise your right hand. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps Reserve to rank from 22 May 1998, do you hereby accept such appointment? And do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, both foreign and domestic? That you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same? That you take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, and you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office of which you are about to enter to help you God.
Good luck. Good luck. God bless you. May the good Lord hold you in the palm of his hands. Semper Fidelis. Second lieutenants, seats. The Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral J. L. Johnson, will administer the oath of office to those being commissioned in the United States Navy. Admiral Johnson, I present 738 midshipmen of the graduating class to be commissioned in the United States Navy. Graduates to be commissioned in the United States Navy, please rise. Let me just say that I too am intensely proud of this wonderful class and the great institution our United States Naval Academy, which brought all 908 members of this class to this moment. We're eager to have you join the fleet, and we're counting on you to turn the challenges of the 21st century into opportunities to make the world's greatest Navy even better. Godspeed to you all. Now, all midshipmen entering the United States Navy, please raise your right hand. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy Reserve to rank from 22 May 1998, do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter. So help you God. I do. Congratulations and welcome aboard, Ensign. Ensign seats. Ensign David S. Foreman, President of the Class of 1998. President Clinton, would you please join me at the podium? Sir, on behalf of all the newly commissioned ensigns and second lieutenants in the great class of 1998, I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to share this special day with us. As a sign of our appreciation, I would like to present you with this gift that hopefully you will be able to wear with pride the next time that we beat Army. Ladies and gentlemen, Ensign Sarah A. Styers and Brian M. Weaver will lead us in the singing of our alma mater, Navy Blue and Gold. Please rise. Shipmates, hands over hearts.
Please be seated. The president of the class of 1999, Midshipman Christopher J. O'Brien, United States Navy. I propose three cheers for those about to leave us. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. I propose three cheers for those who we leave behind. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip!